This week in Nerf, we've got new blasters everywhere. I'm Jangular and Stereosaurus for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Diving right on in, a new picture surfaced this week. Uh, Buff Daddy Nerf posted this on Facebook in Nerf Modders. Welcome. This is an image from the January 2018 issue of Toy World from the company Jazzwares, who does uh, gear products for Nerf. And this is actually an image of an ad for a new Nerf vest, but the model is holding something that is very new and interesting, and that is the Infinis. That is something we saw a while back in the big round of leaks, but we couldn't really get a good image of it because it was in the background and it was low quality. Uh, now we have a fairly good image of it, and we have a good idea of what it's going to look like, and uh, it's interesting. That's a decent way to put it. It's interesting. Um, a lot of people in the community so far aren't a big fan of the way it looks. Um, it's definitely, it's unique. It's got its own flavor to it. But what is interesting is that there are rumors and speculation floating from various posters that uh, this may have a rapid strike pusher mech and may have some sort of a gimmick that uh, relates to the infamous name in terms of being able to top certain things off and continue shooting. Uh, I don't have any real details, concrete details, so I don't want to say one way or the other, but that is something that people are speculating on and it's definitely interesting and worth talking about because it is, it's an interesting idea, an interesting gimmick. I don't know if it will be worth the bulk and the size of the shell and all that, but what is interesting is, while we may not like the shell as it is, well, you may like it, I'm on the fence on it, a lot of people don't like it, um, I think this bulky big shell may offer modders and integrators something very fun to work with in terms of having a lot of space inside once they gut anything that's in there that may not be necessary for general function. Uh, I think... I think we could see some really cool stuff. I think people will be chopping off the stock because the stock is super short. Even the, the young teenage model or, or however old that the, the kid in the picture is, even they can't shoulder the blaster properly. It's so tiny. So that's definitely, definitely something I think we'll see integrators be chopping off and replacing with other stocks and kind of just, I'm really curious to see what people do with this shell. It's one of those things where, you know, maybe not everyone's going to get one, but... I think we'll see something really, really cool from it in terms of the modding community. Uh, and I have to speculate in terms of the modding community because we don't have all of the information yet. At least I don't have all the information yet in terms of concrete details. But what I did have shared with you, and I will for certain keep you all updated, but this is just very interesting that uh, this accidental leak happened in a magazine or a Toy World issue for advertising a different product, which was a Nerf vest, which we'll be seeing at some point in the near future, I would assume, considering it's in the January 2018 issue. But regardless, let me know what your thoughts are on this particular item, the Infinis, and the way it was leaked and all of that, and your thoughts on what it may be when it is released. Moving on, uh, more leaked blasters. This comes to us, uh, well, it actually was originally on Facebook, and it came from, I believe, a uh, Nerf group, in Thailand or a Thailand nerf group on Facebook but then that post was deleted and now there's information up on Blaster Hub so that's where these images are coming from and these are the Marvel Infinity Wars Assemble Blasters. These are five different blasters that appear to just be single shot blasters but they have a unique function gimmick whatever you want to call it. They have a ton of attachment points on them. They're super modular I guess you could say and you, you can attach different parts and put them all over and you, you can see in the image the, the kids got this just thing this monstrous thing and I'm sure it'll be fun for kids to attach and make whatever crazy thing they want to uh, for the you know the modding community and, and the hobby side of things probably not the most relevant thing but if you are a Marvel fan you like collecting and whatnot these are something that they're interesting there's something to keep an eye out for um, that being said, they're probably not going to perform great. They're probably not going to be the most war-worthy blasters. Doesn't mean we won't run them. Uh, I also don't know why Hulk needed a blaster when there's 
how many other characters in Infinity Wars that could have a blaster of some kind? I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what, but sure, Hulk is popular. I guess let's get, we'll give him a blaster, because why not? The literal unkillable, let's just give him a blaster. I, that's not the point. The point is, this is, this is a tie-in line. It probably won't be the cheapest, because it is a licensed line, but... I, I tend to enjoy seeing licensed lines from Hasbro just for the collector side of things. That being said, I do wish they would make them perform better. I really would love to see some like quality licensed products. Like even if it's just a, a, a strife or uh, if they took the cam shell and did something with that for a line, like that would be cool. I mean, the Jin Erso Blaster and the Cassian Andor Deluxe, like those were cool licensed Blasters, give us more of that. That was awesome. I would love to see more of that. But licensed products are interesting for collectors regardless. And uh, I'm sure, like I said, these will be fun for kids. Moving right along, JSPB, JSPB uh, finished up their newest iteration of the JSPB Pro 2. And this is the long scar version. Now, this is an updated design to, to uh, improve some design aspects, such as like the grip and the trigger, kind of thickening them up, making them more comfortable and more bulky. Um, but the big thing to me is that this is an update to the scar barrel inside. Um, the website says two stage. I'm not sure exactly how you, how you would do two stages precisely, but it's a, it's a longer barrel that uh, claims to increase accuracy by 20% over the original JSPB Pro 2. And if you remember my review of that blaster, uh, I fell in love with it and the, the accuracy that it gave me, uh, only to be really kind of outdone by the Caliburn. And that's, you know, it was a solid, solid blaster. So to see more improved accuracy from it is definitely really, really cool. And I'm, I'm interested to see if those claims are correct or not. Uh, I'm sure once they hit, they will be expected to ship by February, and they will be going for about $130 to $155 US. Um, so from there, whether or not that's your price range, uh, it depends on whether you like, want an air blaster or not, if you want something else. But I definitely think they're interesting and have a unique look and appeal to them that is very, very distinct, and that is something worth mentioning if you want something different on the field in terms of what you're running. Next up, Containment Crew has some new products. These are the containment cages. Well, I shouldn't say new in terms of the cages. They have had the containment cages for a little while now. I'm actually running one in my Strife currently, but they have two new designs out. One of which is the Jin Erso slash Cassian Andor uh, blaster design. And that is just coming out because with the recent price drop in the Jyn Erso and Cassian Ander blasters, more people are finally getting access to them because of, you know, Star Wars tax was fairly hefty. And so why not have some more cages to them? And there's another one as well they're releasing for the Modulus ECS-10. These do run $16 for all of their containment cages. You can get them in 42 millimeter, 43 millimeter, uh, whatever, whichever crush you prefer. Uh, I'm talking about this because I think it's it's always good, I've said it so many times in this show, it's always good to have competition in the term, in the marketplace for Nerf. It provides us better products and more options for the consumer. And so now, along with OFP, you have Containment Crew for options for the Jyn Erso and, um, and Modulus ECS-10 base blaster, which is great. Also of note, Containment Crew is doing a 10% off sale this weekend through Monday and I think $75 orders or more in the U.S. get free shipping with the coupon code STOCKUP2018. Uh, I know I, I got to place some order for some things, so figured I'd let you all know about that as well, just in case. But yeah, I I'm curious to see how the Generous Through Cages perform from them. If you pick one up, let me know how it goes. I'm certainly curious because I've got a couple I need to upgrade now as well. That's going to bring us to our mod of the week, and this comes to us from GDOP26. This is something I've been following for a little while now, and this is his HVZ Spring Shotgun. This is a really cool custom-built and designed shotgun by, by GDOP26 that fires a variety of foam ammo. It can shoot elites, it can shoot megas, it can shoot rival rounds, and he's got different shells to make it work with whatever they want, and I absolutely love this thing. It's just, it's just so cool. I mean... 
it's just so cool. I'm gonna have links down below to some of the functions of you know, it firing different things and uh, cycling and ejecting shells. That's just, I think that's one of the coolest things to me is being able to, you know, load the shells in and watching them shoot out after you finish. Uh, you know, we featured uh, Mr. Heath Pants shotgun as well from the Exu shell. I, I just, I love the way they, they look and function in terms of like that in Nerf. It's so cool. And I just love that they designed this. And I'm really looking forward to when they either start selling them fingers crossed or release the files for all of us to create our own so go check that out that that link will be down below i'll have a few links for that actually down below and that's gonna bring us to our video of the week and that comes to us from rival league and that is their video on easy build barriers now i've done a video on barriers before how to build them i actually really like the way that darkon over at rival league has done his barriers now they may not work or be practical for my com my competitive 5v5 league stuff uh, but for general game use i really like these i think they are fantastic i love the use of snap on pieces and the way things roll up together i think it's really really well done and uh, i think it's definitely worth taking a look at because they are really easy simple easy they store away well i just i think I think he did a really good job with these pieces of cover. And if you're looking to add a couple pieces of cover to your games to kind of mix things up and make things a little more interesting, definitely take a look at these because I think they are well worth it. That will be right here because we're now at the end of the video. Let me know what you thought of everything today. The big thing, the infamous. Let me know your thoughts on that along with everything, the mod of the week, the shotgun, the pieces of cover, new cages, JSPB, Marvel blasters, all of it. Let me know in the comments below. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.